In today's video, we're going to build this. There are several ways that you can implement themes in your user interface. Generally, these only choose between light and dark mode, but any color scheme could be a choice. In the last video, I showed you how to accomplish this with only CSS and a checkbox. This time, we're only going to use CSS, no checkboxes or JavaScript. I still have two more ways to implement a mode picker after this video. Those will be a bit more advanced and they will use JavaScript. So stay tuned for those. There will also be some extra cool things thrown in throughout each video. So be sure to watch to the end to pick up all of my tips and tricks. A link to the code is in the description below. And if this video helps you out, help me out by liking the video and subscribing for more videos like this. Let's get started. So we're going to use code pen and we'll start with the HTML and we'll have a header. Pretty simple there. And then the next thing we will have is a div with the class of BG wrapper. Within this div, we're going to have an image and I'm going to paste the source in. And then in our alt, we'll just say background and we're going to add a class to this. And that is going to equal BG. Just keep it simple. And that is actually it for the background. Okay, so right now, let me just move this over. We just have this big image. So it has the dark side and the light side. All right, let's move on to the CSS. The first thing that I'll do is import a font from Google, Polar One. We are going to use CSS variables, so I'm going to paste those in. So in our root, we're going to define white as this E0. Black is going to be ones. The background color, we're going to initially set to our variable of white. The text color is also going to be set to our variable of white. And then our text alt color is going to be our black. You'll see why we have these settings in just a minute. Background translate, we're going to track that and we'll set that to zero initially. We're also going to set our header text from our CSS. Initially, the text is going to be light side. All right, now let's implement some resets. So we'll say star and then we'll set our margin to zero, our padding to zero, and our box sizing to border box. All right, and then after that, let's target our body. In the body, we're going to display this as flex. We're going to align items, center, Justify content center, and we'll set the height to 100 VH, 100 viewport height. All right, and that's just going to make everything in the center here. Next, we're going to set our background to be our uh, variable of BG color. And then we're going to set a transition and we're going to set that on our background color of 0 0.6 seconds and we'll set an ease so whenever the background color transitions from dark to light or light to dark we're going to have a nice transition all right now let's style the header in the header we're going to set a position on this of absolute so we're going to take it out of the document flow and we're going to set it at the top of zero and the left of zero. And then we're going to set a width of 100% and then a height. We'll set that to three rim. Background is going to be our variable of background color. And a transition, we're going to set the same transition on the background of 0 0.6 seconds and ease. We're also going to set a Z index on this of one so that the header is always on top of everything else. All right, now we're going to do some cool things with the header. We're going to set the text, like I said, uh, using a variable. So header after, I'm going to use a pseudo element. We're going to position this as absolute. And then we're going to set the content using our variable of header text. 
All right, so we're setting that up here, header text, light side. And there we go, we can see it here. All right, so now we're gonna set our color, is going to be our variable of text color. Now we set the text color the same as the background color, and you might've been wondering why. We also have an alt color. Before I do that, let's actually change the font family. We're gonna set that to polar one and sans serif as the fallback. And the reason why we're setting the text color as the same as the background is because we're going to add a text stroke around the font. We'll use that by using WebKit text stroke. And we're gonna set that to two pixels and the variable of text color alt. And there we go. Let's set the font size to two rem. We're also gonna set a margin of one rem top and bottom, two rem left and right. And then we're gonna set a transition of 0 0.5 seconds ease. And now let's target our background wrapper. That was BG wrapper. And we're going to just set the overflow on this to hidden because right now we can see, we can scroll left and right, but we want the overflow to be hidden so that we don't see the part of the, uh, the image that's off the screen. So now we can only scroll up and down. That is what we want. Now let's target our BG, which is our image. First, we're going to set the width to 200 viewport width. So it's basically 200% of the viewport size. And that's so that we can only see one side of the image. Now we're gonna set transform and the translate X, which is our left and right or horizontal. We're gonna set that to the variable of BG translate. All right, initially we set that to zero. So that's gonna stay here on the left side of the image. And then we're going to set a transition on the transform of 0 0.6 seconds, ease in out. So when we transition from the left side of the image to the right side of the image, we'll have a nice transition. All right, so that's all of the main styles. And now we're gonna go up here just after our root settings. And this is where the magic happens. We're gonna say media prefers color scheme dark. So this is in the user's operating system settings. And if they have set dark as their preferred color scheme, then we're going to make some changes to our custom variables. So we're gonna change in our root. We'll take all of these here. And these are the ones that we're gonna change. So we'll paste them down here, fix that. All right, so our background color, we want it to be the opposite. So we'll say black. Text color, the same, it's gonna be black. Text alt color will be white, the opposite. Now on our translate, this is where we're changing the position of the image. Initially it's set to zero. So in order to see the right side of the image, we're gonna translate X a negative 100 VW. So remember our image is set to 200 VW. The first 100, which starts at zero, is going to be the left side of the image and the second 100 on the right side. So if we translate a negative 100, we're going to move the image 100 viewport widths to the left, which will then show us the other side of the image. All right, and then we're gonna change our header text to dark side. So that's actually it for the code. I'm going to pull up my operating system settings. Now you can see here that in my operating system, I'm using Windows and I have it set to light. Now if I change this to dark, you can see that our header text changed and the image moved to the right side of the image, which is our dark side. I'll change it back to left and it goes back to the light. I actually prefer dark, so we're gonna leave it at that. So in this example, I'm not providing a toggle for the user to choose the theme. I'm using what the user has already set in their preferences in their operating system settings. If the user prefers dark themes, then the site will default to dark automatically. This provides a great user experience. So that's gonna be it for this video. 
Remember that I'm going to have two more videos that are going to show you alternate methods to implement theming. Look out for those very soon. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.